Welcome back, record collectors, music lovers, and crate diggers. This is Ant on Music, and I'm your host, Ant. And we're going to take a look at some new releases this week, some re-releases, and a couple of things that move me closer to completing a couple artists in my uh, my collection. Uh, you know, the usual stuff that I talk about. Um, well, before we get into the new stuff, a couple of things in music news this week. Uh, you had... Uh, Getty Lee released his book, and he's been out on tour promoting that. The book is called My F in Life. It's on my Christmas list. Um, and in an article I read, he alluded to the fact that him and Alex Lifeson, the, the door is open for them to get together and tour again um, with a new drummer, possibly doing Rush stuff. I, I don't think it would ever lead to a full-on Rush album, uh, but... You never know. Uh, I, I say probably not because, you know, if you're a fan of Rush, you know that Neil was the, the lyricist for the band. So without Neil around, you know, God rest his soul, uh, I, I don't see uh, them going out with new material. Would I be against them going out with uh, a fill-in drummer? Depends on who it is. Uh, you know, Neil was a really awesome drummer, and to have someone fill his spot... Those are really tremendous uh, shoes to fill. Uh, but what Getty Lee had said was based on his and Alex's contributions to the uh, Taylor Hawkins tribute, that it's quite possible that they could go out there and, and tour as, you know, some form of, of Rush or at least do Rush music, which would be great. You know, I, I was very happy that I got to see them several times. And of course, I got to see them on their, their final tour, saw them at the last stop that they made at uh, Madison Square Garden it was really, really awesome. Great show. Uh, definitely went out on a high note. Other music news, uh, you know, Rush once opened for these guys, uh, Kiss. Kiss supposedly calling it a day uh, at the end of the road tour at Madison Square Garden in New York City, you know, ending it in the city where it all started uh, for Gene and Paul, along with uh, Tommy Thayer and Eric... Uh, singer in tow is uh, filling the roles of Ace and Peter. Uh, would have loved to have seen the actual Spaceman and Catman get up on stage and end it the way it should be ended, but that didn't come to pass. Uh, something that also elicited some groans in the audience was when the show ended and Paul Stanley said, this is not the end of Kiss it's the start of a new beginning, and then they rolled out footage of them as avatars, saying that the band was going to continue on as avatars. Um, to me, it seems like another cash grab from the band. Uh, I can't see myself supporting it. Um, the last couple albums were pretty weak, uh, and just to have them up there like some sort of cartoon or video game character, yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to do it for anybody that's, you know... Uh, a hardcore member of the KISS Army or, or not, but uh, I, I don't think it's for me. But that's what's gone on in the past week in music, uh, at least of what I've heard of star, stuff that I'm interested in. So um, let's get into the new releases, all right? First one is Peter Gabriel, all right? Uh, this is the physical release of this. You know, if, if you're a Peter Gabriel fan, you've been uh, well aware that this album has been out, you know, Dribs and drabs over the course of the past year. Uh, very excited in this past January when all of a sudden the full moon email started again and they released tracks from the album one by one over the past year. The album comes in three different configurations, two on vinyl. One is the blue version here, uh, which is the dark mixes. Then you have the pink version, which if you look over here, you can see the pink. I'm going to get into that in a second. Uh, you have the pink, which is the light versions, and then you have the uh, the green version, which is the inside mixes. Uh, and then later on, next March, there's going to be a release of a box set, which I'm probably going to get that too, because I'm a huge Peter Gabriel fan. Uh, have been, God, probably since the uh, the early 80s. Uh, and the album is called I.O., all right? Uh, and we'll take a look at the album. You know, it's got like this Obi strip on it, you know, on the Obi strip. Basically, uh, it has his autograph there and handwritten just a part of everything, which is part of the lyrics of 
I.O., which is the title track. Uh, very cool album from Peter Gabriel. I've heard mixed reviews about it from certain people. Some people dig it. They don't dig it. I really dig it. I mean, there should be no surprises. The album's been released over the course of the past year, a track a month, and then you get the different mixes in there as well. Uh, inside the record itself, you get a download card. Uh, pretty much you've been listening to it as a download or streaming all year long. Uh, you have a gatefold sleeve with the giant eye right there. That was part of the live presentation uh, in his live, you know, live, live show this year. And it was pretty cool. Uh, the, the live show, I got to see it. I talked about that back when I went. If you want to see what I had to say about that, go back and find the old video that has it on there. Um, you know, the album kicks off with the first song that was released, Panopticon. Uh, probably my favorite song on the album is, is, is next, Playing for Time. Uh, really great song. You know, basically all of us are, are, you know, we're looking for more time. There's never enough time in life. And the older you get, the more that becomes relevant. Uh, the Court, Four Kinds of Horses, Title Track I.O., Love Can Heal, Road to Joy, So Much. That's a, another great song from here, Olive Tree, This Is Home. Uh, and still, and still was written. Peter wrote that song when his mom passed away, and it, it's here. And the album finishes off with "Live and Let Live," which is great advice. Uh, so then you got the back cover there with all the title tracks. Another cool thing about this, we'll show the albums. Um, you have in the dark side mixes, you have black sleeves with the blue labels. All right, the album itself on both. Pink and blue are basic black. No color variations as of yet. Um, and it also comes with this art book, okay? Uh, if you saw the live show, you know, this is like a, you know, th this is a complete, you know, work of art. It's not just an album. Uh, Peter got individual artists to come up with art for each of the songs, uh, you know, Here's the first one. This is for Panopticon. Then you have for um, Playing for Time. You know, if you look at that, that is basically like family photos right there. Goes along with the lyrics. If you page on through, you have Four Kinds of Horses. Very similar to the artwork for Up. And, you know, it goes through each of the songs and it has the lyrics. It has the liner notes, everything associated with it. You know, so you've got some very different looks at the artwork associated with the, the Peter Gabriel I.O. album. Uh, as far as the pink version goes, you know, not much of a difference. You know, differences are really, you've got the pink OB strip on there. You know, same thing, Pete's autograph on there. It's not a real autograph. And uh, lyrics from I.O., just a part of everything. It also has a download card in there. Uh, difference, you know, you've got the pink label, black vinyl, white bags for the uh, for the records. Also has the download card. Artwork's the same in here, except you know, covers pink front and back as opposed to the blue. And inside the record itself, you know, you have pink liner on this one and, and blue on that. So those are the differences between that. Same track listing, except the mixes are slightly different uh, between the light side and the dark side. And as well, the CD, which I'm still waiting to arrive, which is the inside mixes. Uh, you know, the only difference is gonna be the color and the, uh, you know, the, the slight variation on the, uh, the music itself. Uh, some people have said that they find it a bit distracting that, you know, you have the two different mixes. Why wasn't it just released as one mix? I'll be honest with you, on different days, different times, I prefer one mix over the other. And the variation is so slight that it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, if you haven't heard it, you, know, you obviously aren't much of a Peter Gabriel fan because the album has been out basically piece by piece over the course of the past year. Uh, I love it. I think it's a great album. Definitely one of my top albums of the year. Um... Next up, we have a totally different realm of music. You know, you go from the super serious stuff of Peter Gabriel to uh, these guys. You know, out of Chicago, Enough's Enough. This is uh, basically a repress. You know, it's really a repress because it was never pressed on vinyl before, but 
re-release, and this time it's re-released on vinyl through Deadline Records. This is their third album, Animals with Human Intelligence, and another gatefold album, picture of the band, which, uh, you know, has changed many times over time in the past, uh, you know, almost three decades they've been around. But uh, this was their third album, and it kicks off with Superstitious, goes into Black Rain, Right By Your Side, which I absolutely love. These Days, another great song. One of their heavier songs, Master of Pain, Inside One with Innocence, uh, One Step Closer to You, Bring It On Home, Taking a Ride, The Love Train, Marion Lost Her Baby, which is a great song, and Rock and World. The album itself, you got the hype sticker, so you know that it is splatter vinyl. They were definitely one of the more colorful bands from the era. You know, they, they always had their peace symbol, if you can see that there behind the uh, lyrics. And then you've got a picture of the band with liner notes there. And here's the vinyl itself. Very cool looking blue and brown splatter right there. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool album if you dig Enough's Enough. I'm a big Enough's Enough fan. It's, I guess you could call them a guilty pleasure. I, I think they were lumped in with the hair bands, and they probably shouldn't have been. They, they were definitely more of a power pop band, but that's what was going on in the late 80s was, you know, was hair metal. And they, I guess they found the way to, you know, get their product out there. Their first album had two big hits on there, two big videos back when videos meant something with uh, Fly High Michelle and New Thing. And, uh, you know, then they had Strength. You know, Strength was their second album. And that album is phenomenal, top to bottom. Um, I wonder who has the rights to that, because I have most of the stuff in their catalog. I have all of it on CD, and most of it on vinyl. Um, they released a new album earlier this year. Uh, name right now eludes me. And that was only released on CD. And they've slowly been releasing the albums on vinyl over time, but somehow Strength has never made it out. They've had other, you know, lesser known albums that have come out on vinyl and come out on vinyl multiple times, uh, like 10 and Paraphernalia. But for some reason, Strength, which is like the most solid album in their entire catalog, has never, never made it to vinyl. Um, and I have the original copy on CD. Uh, I believe it came out on vinyl originally at the time I... Didn't have uh, didn't have the need for vinyl. I actually was one of those guys that walked away from vinyl and came back to it. Uh, so I missed out on that. I'm hoping it gets a re-release soon. Also have another add to my collection. Another Enough's Enough album. And this one is Hard Rock Night. And of course you see the peace symbol there, which is part of their, uh, their logo. And this is an entire cover of Beatles songs. You know, every album, every song on this album is a Beatles song. And they're a huge Beatles fan, and you hear it in their music. They have that vibe. They have that power pop vibe. Everything that comes from the Beatles, you know, uh, filtered through these guys. And Chips Enough's a huge Beatles fan, and it definitely shows. And this is a, a great homage to the band. And with this one, get a cool, you know, almost psychedelic layout there of uh, Enough's Enough, you know, breaking it down live got their notes on the songs contained therein and the liner notes uh this one of course you know if you're gonna have a beatles cover album what you know what color you're gonna make it oh you're gonna make it white of course you know all the beatles white album so you have that there with their peace symbol there on the label and uh you know this is a this is a fun album if you're if you're a beatles fan and you're not a purist and you're a you know Hair metal, hard rock fan, or enough's enough fan. Definitely, this is this is a great album to add to your collection. Uh, I'm happy to finally have it on vinyl. Uh, it's got Magical Mystery Tour, Lennon's Cold Turkey, Ella Rigby, um, Live and Let Die, Dear Prudence, Helter Skelter, Jet Revolution, Back in the USSR, and finishes up with a little help from my friends. Great, great album from Enough's Enough. Yeah, I, I dig them. Moving right along. Uh, this is a little indication as to what's next. Here's the hype sticker. Okay. Clark Kent. This is Stuart Copeland of the police. Okay. This is his alternate identity. And uh, this album features more Stuart Copelands than Sting could ever stand. 
in the gatefold. On the back, you've got all the tracks of wax and the records themselves. They're pretty straightforward. Plain white sleeves. More Stewart on both sides. Basic black heavyweight vinyl. Still very cool. And this is another fun album to have. Um, Stewart does everything on this album. Sings. Plays guitar. Plays bass. Uh, you know, of course drums. And, and there's no mistake in, you know, where the police came from. You know, Stewart has always said it's his band. You listen to this and you know damn well that the police was Stewart's band before uh, Sting started writing everything. A couple of fun songs on here. Uh, Too Cool for Calypso, Grand Eloquent, and also uh, the semi-Christmas song, Yo Ho Ho. If you've never heard it, give it a listen. Uh, it's it's a it's a fun album, a couple of really great tracks, and uh, you know it's if you're a police fan, you should dig it. I, I I I dig it. I was happy to get this in my collection. I never owned it before. I had Yo Ho Ho on a Christmas compilation, but other than that, nothing. And he actually got Sting and Andy Summers to appear in one of the videos for this back when, but they were masked because the record company didn't want it to be associated with the police. Uh, but you know, cool stuff. Clark Kent, Mr. Stuart Copeland, one of the best drummers on the planet. You know, his rhythms are like nothing else. Last thing that I have for you this week, okay? If you know Big Big Train, you know this gentleman. All right, kind of hard to see because it's white, but this is David Longden, Wild River. This is a remixed, remastered edition of David's first solo album. He put out two, uh, and this remix remastered version is, uh, you know, obviously released posthumously. David passed away tragically at home two years ago, right around the third week in November. He had fallen at home and, and, and died subsequently thereof from his injuries. Uh, really sad because he had just really, you know, taken, taken root with Big Big Train. He had joined them. Uh, for the album The Underfall Yard, and he'd been with them since. He released one album solo, which came out uh, posthumously, which is behind me. It's uh, called Door One. Great album as well. Uh, and he released an album prior to that with Judy Dibble of Fairport Convention, and she had passed away after the making of that album. Uh, but this album, I mean, it's not all down. I mean, this, this album is joyous, Wild River. It's really a, a great listen title track is uh fantastic joe lee's another fantastic song on here um you know you've got the gatefold you got a very young looking mr longden right there as opposed to the older version of david back here um and you know this is if, if you like prog music but more folky and i don't mean like jethro toll really out there you know full-on folk or even Simon and Garfunkel. I guess the, a good way to describe it is pastoral. Uh, this is a good album for you. Honey Trap, uh, fantastic song. Uh, Mandy, not a cover of the Barry Manilow song, uh, his own version of it. Uh, you know, some really classic tracks on here. And, you know, aside from Remix Remastered, the artwork has been redone. So you get to see the full, full effect right there. And the albums were released and that's what is being described as Fern Green, right here, okay? And also, and these are just, you know, regular plain white sleeves, and also what they're calling it, Daffodil Yellow, okay? And I'll show that to you right here. Let's see, there we go. Daffodil Yellow, David Longden. Uh, if you've never heard of him or Big Big Train, uh, you know, and you dig prog music, dig any music, check it out. It's it's good stuff. I really enjoy Big Big Train and especially David Longden. David Longden, one of my buddies, my buddy Goose, we always talk about singing and how he sings within himself. He never really stretches or strains. He, you know, he's reserved, I guess, but he's got such a beautiful and powerful voice and he brings so much as far as his talents as far as being a multi-instrumentalist and an arranger really really fantastic if you didn't know um david was actually 
one of the finalists to replace Phil Collins in Genesis. And as a fan of Genesis, you got to wonder what could have been with him. Uh, they picked Ray Wilson, and Ray Wilson's a great singer, and he has some excellent music himself. You know, he came from Stiltskin. David came from a band called The Gift Horse, and Ray beat him out. Um, and like I said, kind of got to wonder what could have been. But luckily, he ended up with Big Big Train, and they had a fantastic run of albums with David. I wish him the best of luck uh, in the future, you know, with, with the new lead singer they have. Uh, but Dave was a, a fantastic fantastic vocalist you should check that out um that's pretty much everything i have for this week in the coming weeks christmas music maybe a box set or two left before the end of the year and gonna try and wrap up you know my year of music uh what i'd really like for you guys to do you know guys and gals is to you know drop a comment down below uh is there something you want me to, to dig into in my record collection? Um, tell me what you like, what you don't like in the past year of music. Maybe it's something we both agree upon. Maybe something that we can argue about. Uh, and Christmas music, that's another one. We're going to do some Christmas music if, uh, if we have time. And that's pretty much going to wrap up the year for me uh, over the next three to four weeks. And then we'll kick it right back in the new year. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming to the channel and supporting it. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, if you haven't already, please, 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 aside from clicking like and leaving a comment, most importantly, join the colony, okay? Join the ant colony. Hit the subscribe button below. Love to have you uh, checking in every week or so as I drop these videos. I enjoy making them. Hopefully you enjoy watching them uh, as usual. As I always say, peace, one love, and music to you all. Take care and have a great day.